Hi everyone, just uh, a quick video here to show some of the progress on the um, the merging of the, the mobs and the NPCs just into a general NPC uh, and your ability to customise the NPC's behaviour using behaviour trees and also um, conversational dialogue trees as well. Okay, so we'll start off with, um, we'll put down here a NPC which is, let's just put down a guard. So it defaults at the name of the guard behavior default which is basically nothing. Um, a default system conversation, which is just the the um, the old text, the old speech from the previous system brought across. Uh, we now you can now specify an inventory for the NPCs. So if I save that, you can see that that NPC basically just does nothing, it just stands there. It will follow, it will turn to face me if I walk around it. And when I put my ret reticle on it, it just says I'm, he's speechless, but that's, that will actually be the default um, system speech, which I haven't put in yet. Now, um, if we want to give him some very simple behaviour, that the most simple behaviour we can give him is um, so this is the behaviour edit screen, it's still a little bit rough so whatever you see on here is likely to change but it will give you a general idea so we'll rename the behaviour to just a simple wander and we just give it the update so we just drag these nodes across into the tree to define the behaviour. The update node is basically just a node which just keeps it looping over and over. If we don't have one of those, it'll just do the behaviour once and then stop. So we put a wander behaviour here. Now there's some properties you can define for each node. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll set the move type to spawn relative. So it's the position here is relative to its spawn, uh, spawn block and the distance is how far from that spawn block to wander so if we make it 8 blocks and I'll just slow them down a little bit then this, this is saying that the guard will wander anywhere within 8 blocks up to 8 blocks away from his spawn block and that's it, that's, that's about as simple as it gets for an AI so we'll save that We'll assign that to his spawn block. Behavior, use behavior NPC wander. Now I actually have to kill him to respawn him, so he uses it. So you'll see now he just will just wander around randomly within eight blocks of that spawn block. So it doesn't matter how far away I go, he'll stay there. So typically what we would do, just to keep things um, as, as a general optimization, is we would put into the behavior a, de a deactivate node, which is uh, basically just says deactivate the NPC once it's uh, X number of blocks from this once the, once there's no players within X number of blocks from it, so I'll set it to 50. So as soon as um, any as soon as there's no players within 50 blocks of the NPC, it will deactivate. So it's just gonna that's just gonna help with main, maintaining a good frame rate because NPCs are relatively expensive. So if we've got 
a whole lot of NPCs all around the world and they're not being deactivated it's going to it's going to impact your frame rate that's on the Xbox at least anyway so we'll save that I have to kill him again so so he respawns with the new behavior So he'll do his wander around. Now you see if I get it more than 50 blocks away, he despawns. And when I get within, I think it's about 30 blocks, he'll respawn. Okay, so that's a very simple behaviour. Um, we'll create a new behaviour, which is which will be called a little bit more sophisticated and we'll call it NPC guard and this behavior will tell the NPC to guard his spawn block within a distance so if anyone comes within distance of that spawn block the NPC will attack that player or NPC so the next thing we want to do is um, uh, if, if we can see if we can see a player or an NPC see the search types here you can define uh, specific uh, mob types or player or you can just make it blank and in that case it, will, it applies to everybody and we'll take the closest one so if the NPC sees if this guard sees um, a, a player or an NPC and the distance is but then we want to guard the say we want to guard the block. Uh, let's say up to ten blocks away. So we set it as distance. Do it as distance check here to the spawn block. Let's say the distance is, and we want to set we want to check the distance of how far away the target is. So if the target, this is the target is the person that you can see. So if the target is less than or equal to 10 blocks away from the spawn block then we want to attack that target so how these nodes work is the nodes, each node has a is executed and it has a success or a failure status so if a node succeeds when it's executed, if it succeeds, it then moves to the next node uh, on its right. Uh, or if a node fails, it will move down to the node below it. So with the update node always succeeds, so it will go to the one on the right, which is a deactivate node. If the mob is, if there's, if, sorry, if there's players within 50 blocks of the mob, uh, so if, if there's no players within 50 blocks of the mob, then the deactivate node succeeds, the, the NPC is deactivated and it will continue to the right but there's no nodes to the right so the behavior tree now stops so nothing else is executed so none of the stuff below is executed however if there is um, if there is a player within 50 blocks of the NPC the deactivate will not deactivate the NPC so the deactivate node fails and it will move down to the next node below it and it will do the is visible check. If there is, if there is, if it, if there is no mo uh, players or mobs visible, it will fail and move down to the to the node below it. So there's no node below it. So we'll add a just a general wander node down here, and that again will wander relative to the spawn block. And we'll make it say five blocks. So 
if I can't see anything it'll just wander around. If I can see something, it, it will move, to, it succeeds, the node, the, node, the node succeeds, so it will move to the next one on its right. This one now checks the distance. If what it, if the person, it, the mob or the player it can see is less than or equal to 10 blocks from the spawn block, then he's too close, so let's attack. Otherwise, if that if he's if the player that it can see if the mob or the player it can see is greater than ten blocks away, it doesn't care, and it will fail, so it will move down. Now there's not one below it, so it will move back. It will keep moving back and down until it finds one below. So it'll default back to the wander here. So let's try that. That's called NPC guard. So I'll set that. Let's actually create another one over here. And we'll call this guy, we'll make this guy a um, Templar. And we'll set his behavior as guard. Now well, let's also give him a weapon, or we'll give him some food. And we'll give him a weapon as well. So let's give him a steel claymore. Now I just have to delete him to refresh his AI. So you can see he's you can see he's holding a steel claymore and a pizza and he's attacking me because I'm within 10 blocks of that of his spawn block. Now I move 10 blocks away and he stops attacking me and just wanders around. I move within within 10 blocks he will attack me. That's a simple. That's a simple guard behavior. Just guarding that that spot. Now, if so, I can attack him as well. Of course, I'll put mob nameplates on so you can see how his damage. Now, if I want, he's got. He's holding some food. So if I want him to eat. Um, if his health gets low, then we can do that too, so we'll create a new behavior. So this is like a, the ability to eat is like a discrete behavior, a small discrete behavior, which we'd probably want to use in various places. So we can, what we can do is we can create a, just a small discrete behavior here. And we'll say, um, let's say that health is, if my health is, less than, say, 75%, then I want to eat to heal myself. So. Now we need to check our hand and see if we've actually got food in our hand. So we use it as a quip type. So we save, say, left hand, um, use the subtype ed uh, edible. So the item is any, ed any edible item. So if that's, so if that's that, will, that node will succeed if my health is less than 75%. This node will succeed if the item in my left hand is edible. And then to eat something, you simply just, just like a player, you just swing your hand. So we'll say left hand, and that so that little that little behaviour says if I, if my health is less than seventy five percent and I've got something edible in my left hand, swing my left hand to eat it and heal myself. So we'll save that.
Now to bring that into the behave into this guy's behavior. Um, we can bring it into any behavior, but the way and way we do that is we use a, a proxy node. So a proxy node will allows us to to bring in uh, any just any other separate behavior tree. It's like an import. Now the properties are grayed out because it's fixed, because it's from another tree, so you can't change these properties. But if you change that um, left hand, eat left hand behavior, those changes will automatically get populated into here. So now the NPC's behavior is, if there's uh, no player within 50 blocks then deactivate, otherwise if my health is less than 75% and I'm holding something edible in my left hand, then swing my left hand and eat. Otherwise, if there's somebody visible, etc. So we'll save that. So now let's go and see if he eats. Actually, I have to kill him first to refresh his behavior. Myself first, so he doesn't kill me. So you see, he just ate his pizza. Now you see, he's not fighting back, all he's doing is just continuously eating, which is not ideal. What we would like him to do is actually fight back a little bit as well while he's healing himself. So to do that, we can put in here a random check. So if we go is random, let's say one out of four chances. So one out of four, one, one out of four times through the loop, he's going to swing his hand. So that gives him, uh, he's going to eat. So three out of four times, he's actually going to try and fight back. So let's try that. Now what you'll see now if we edit, if we have a look at that new behavior, the old behavior, the guard behavior, where it's used the proxy, you can see it's now brought in the is random, because it's brought in the tree from the, uh, the, the logic from another tree, so it's automatically refreshed with any changes, which is a very useful feature of the proxy. So I'll just kill this guy to refresh his AI. Now he should heal himself, but also fight back occasionally as well. So you can see he's eating, but he's also fighting back, which is more more useful behaviour. Otherwise he just stands there and eats the whole time, which is no use. Like a bug, he's run away from his spawn block. Oh no, that's another one. Okay, so let's go and let's have now have a look at. So that's an example of a very simple guard behavior. There's uh, all these nodes allow you to do various different things. Um, there's various checks here. You can check if someone's targeting you, so you can um, do something based on that. Like if they're looking at you or attacking you, you can check your health. You can check if you have any history. You can check the distance between yourself and something else or 
your target and something else. You can you can check how old you are, how long you've how long the NPC's been alive for. Uh, you can do as random stuff and is visible is used for like um, seeing if, if the NPC can see anything. State change allows you to change the NPC state to either being just being killed or deactivated or despawned. Um, flee the NPC will run away, follow the NPC will follow whatever you specify. Health allows you to adjust the NPC's health, much like the health script command, so you can decrease it or increase it without the use of food. So I could have changed this to just use a health command as well if you didn't if you didn't have any food. Like a, so you can use that for like an auto health regen if the health is low, lower than uh, whatever. Then over time, regenerate your health. And you'd use a timer for that, so a timer of node just executes the node to its right after a certain amount of time. But it continues with the rest of the tree, whereas the wait command will do the same thing, but will wait, it won't continue with the rest of the tree. Script allows you to execute a script for that NPC or for the for the NPC's target, which could be a player or another NPC. And that checks if the NPC is in a zone, or if the player is in a zone, or the uh, sorry, the target is in a zone. Most of these commands can be executed for the NPC or the or the NPC's target, which is what the NPC is currently looking at through the is visible or is targeted node. So if I now put if I now put an NPC over here. Alien. And we'll give him default behavior NPC wonder. Then if that alien gets you watch this template Templar will attack the alien if he gets within ten blocks of of his spawn block. So or the AI works against other NPCs as well, depending on what you specify as the search type and the visible check. So let's go and add um, some behavior. Let's go and add a conversation to this guy. So if we add, go in here, new conversation. First notice is general general speech. Save that. Now, if we assign that as his conversation, I just have to kill him to refresh. I oh, know you don't have to, it's already there. So, when I look at him, you can see it shows what he um, wants to say below and it shows his name. I'll change his name here. John the guard. So you can see it shows his name. Now let's create some branched dialogue.
So now any conversation we add to the right of this one will be the next level will be considered a, a, as questions or statements I can say to the guard. So if I can add to here, I say so the green ones are the are the, are the ones that the speech that I options that I have, and the yellow ones are what he will say. So I can say how big was the dragon? Or I could say were you afraid of the dragon? Or I could say the dragon Now, if you want to add his responses, you put them on here. So the question was, how big was the dragon? So the dragon was pipsqueak. If he says, were you afraid of the dragon? Then I can say, not. Peasants. Or I can say, or the guard will say no, it was monster. And of course we can just keep adding dialogue into these branches. So for this one here, were you afraid of the dragon? Here I could say, don't call me a peasant, or I can say, watch your sorry, sir. Save that. Now, before now, because there's now branch dialogue, you can see the Y button to talk. It says, "I saw a dragon the other day," so I press Y to talk to him, and it brings up those three options: how big was the dragon? It's, he says the dragon was a pipsqueak. Were you afraid of the dragon? Well, of course not peasant. Don't call me a peasant. And it just goes back. Or well, sorry, sir. And was the dragon stuffed and cuddly? No, it was a monster. So that just gives you a brief idea of how you can now do branch conversation. And just to finish off with that, um, I'll just show you one other thing you can do in there. So, you can also, again, you can do proxy, use proxy, so to bring in snippets of other conversation in here. If you define some sort of general conversations, you can use proxy to bring them in to various uh, conversations. You can also use a script node so that when a conversation branch is selected, that script will be executed. And in fact, if you make the script, if you make a script node, the first node, that will act, that actually runs the script when you first talk to the guard, so that will be the same as uh, the current existing talk script. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll just show you one quickly, one use of this type of thing. So if if you oops let's say I have a script to this node and I'll call that script actually I'll just um 
you can either specify a script name to execute, or you can just do a single run a single command. So I'll just use a single command. Let's say I'll call um, history angry. We'll set it to one, and we'll use target because that's we want the t my we want my history to be. It's actually actor. So we want my history to be. Uh, I want you want me to have one history. If I say that, and if I say this, then we'll remove the history. So history. So that conversation will add the history, and this conversation will delete the history. And what that means now is, if I save that, we can now change this guy's behaviour. Which was just that one, I think. So we can now, in here we can do an is History check. Uh, first of all, we want to do an is visible check because we need a target. If visible player closest of history is history or has history um, angry. greater than zero, if we have that angry history, then we attack. And I want to give him a sword as well. Swords. So I'll just kill him to refresh his behavior. So he's just wandering around, not doing anything. Now I talk to him. Don't call me a peasant. That sets my history. That should have set my history. No, it didn't let me. Um, okay. History angry at uh, one. sure why that hasn't worked. I'll just change that to play and see if that helps. Okay, it 
was that was the problem with the history command. So you can see now he's attacking me. And he will keep attacking me because there's no distance check. He will keep attacking me until he kills me or until I kill him. Let's um, also add eating into his array of behaviors. So we use a proxy. There's a few problems with the um, thing here. And we'll call that NPC. Left hand. So now if he should now eat if I damage him below 70%, he'll eat his fish. There you go. Now if I talk to him and say sorry sir, that removes the history, runs that script to remove the history. So now he's no more, he's no longer aggressive towards me. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of um, what this new feature will allow you to do. Uh, you can end up with some pretty sophisticated behaviour. So. Um, but we're still a work in progress, but that's as far as I've got so far. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.